Welcome to this video where I'm going to have a look at another method you can use to detect exoplanets. And for this one, it's going to be detecting an exoplanet that we wouldn't necessarily be able to detect directly with a transit, and it's called transit timing variation. So, if we have a single planet orbiting a star, and it just so happens to pass in front of the star as we look at it, we get a transit. It blocks out some of the light, and we get this sort of U-shaped dip in the brightness of the star. And also, if it's a single planet in that system, that transit will occur at the same time. Well, not the same time, but you get the same time period between each one. So you wait some period of time, it comes back around again, you get another transit, and that always stays the same. That's, like, that's constant, because you've got a single planet orbiting the star. Now, if you have a second planet, or there's more planets in the system, then your transits are actually going to change when they actually occur. So sometimes they could be early, sometimes they could be late. And that's because the planets are interacting in the system and they can actually change their orbital velocities ever so slightly. So we get one slightly earlier, slightly later. So in this particular system, we've got a exoplanet, which is the green orbit that we can actually see that transits the star. So we can detect that. And then we've got an unseen one that we haven't detected. And we don't know is, is there, but it has an effect on the one that we can detect. And we can actually work out information about that from what we see of the first one. So we would have this sort of system here. The green orbit is the exoplanet we already know about. So this has been transiting across the star. We've got information about that. But if we look in detail, we're gonna notice that there's gonna be some variation in when those transits occur. And that's going to relate to this unseen one that we've got in the system here. So I've placed it outside the orbit of the known one. So it's an unseen exoplanet that we, for some reason, cannot see or detect at the moment. Now that could be for a few reasons. One could be that it's a long way from the star. And if it's a long way from the star, it's gonna have quite a long orbital period. And if it's on the order of years, months, it's going to be, it's gonna have a long time period before you have a transit. So it could be that we just haven't detected one. So you need a long time period for it to pass in front of the star. Or, it could be that it will never transit the star. Its orbit could be inclined compared to the inner planet, the one with the green orbit, so it never actually passes in front of the star from our, our orientation. So we're never actually going to detect it. But regardless of why we can't see it or can't detect it, we can still infer that it's there by what's happening to the inner one. So, if you've got a multiple planet system instead of just a single planet, then they are going to interact with each other. They'll exert a gravitational force on each other as they pass by, and that can ever so slightly accelerate or decelerate the planets, and that can change their orbital velocities, things like that, as they pass by. Now, in this configuration here, you've got the inner planet, which we know about, that's our known planet, and that's orbiting faster than the outer one, so it's going to overtake. And as it does so, it's being pulled towards the unknown or unseen planet. So what that will do is it will slightly speed up the orbit or orbital velocity of the known planet, the one that we're actually getting the transits for. This causes your transit to appear earlier than we would expect, because it's actually been accelerated in its orbit, so we actually detect it earlier than would be predicted. Now, as it goes past, it's going to do the opposite. So as it's gone past, that unseen planet is actually going to gravitationally tug it back, which will then slow it down ever so slightly. So this time round, the transit, the next transit you're gonna get is going to be slightly later than you would expect or predicted because it's slowed it down ever so slightly. And these, this effect that they have when they interact with each other means that your transit timings they do vary. They're never at the exact same time we would expect, so it varies ever so slightly depending on the interactions between the planet. And the good thing about this is it allows you to determine the masses of the planets, because a, a more massive planet is going to have a greater effect on the timing variation than a smaller planet, so it can be very useful for finding things like the mass. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.